Hi, this is Ron Eats Blog, and I'm going to show you today how to deal with an outside round oven roast. This I got on sale the other day really cheaply at Loeb for about $2 a pound, and I'm always tempted to, uh, by getting a, a less expensive cut of meat and trying to make something edible out of it. This is not my would not normally be my first choice because there's not a whole lot of fat in there as you can see. But what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to put lard or bacon into the into the meat and I'm going to insert it into slits. Then my plan will be to brown it on the barbecue, smother it in a great sauce, uh, a very concentrated veal stock with seasonings. Then I am going to seal it in plastic, vacuum pack it in plastic and do a long and slow simmer. So let's get going. The first thing we do is we, we're going to make these incisions into here at various points and I'm going to slip in some bacon fat. Now into these incisions here I'm able to push down some fat. It's called, it's a technique that's called larding as in putting lard or in this case bacon fat into the meat and right into these incisions. This is going to provide fat inside the meat. Remember fat is flavor and tenderness that this roast would not normally provide. So right now we have put the lard into this roast here. By the way this roast is about one and a, one and a half kilograms. Uh, anyways, and we're, I'm going to brown it outside really well on the barbecue. The reason I do it outside is because I don't want all the smoke and stink and whatnot in the kitchen. We want to keep it as simple as possible and uh, as le least mess as possible. Then we're going to take it back inside, we're going to season it, we're going to vacuum pack it and then poach it. It also gives us some, a little flame action. Voila! Uh, the marinade uh, ingredients, we're going to put it in the bag and it's going to go like this. This is some very reduced, very thick, very rich uh, beef stock that I made some weeks ago and froze. It's about, it's a little more than a cup. For color, I'm going to tang and salt. We're not going to add any more salt to this. I'm going to put in a wee bit of miso, uh, which, or you can use hoisin sauce. That'll also give you some. It gives you the ses, er, the soy, and it gives you uh, some salt, and, and hoisin will give you sweetness. I like garlic. That's minced garlic. And we're going to put in put in a good healthy amount of Dijon. This is two green onions and one um, shallot, expertly chopped by Graham. And it all goes in here. The nice thing about this is you can do all of this stupid work ahead of time and then, then once it's all in the bag, that's it. I'm just adding oil because, as I suspect, this is a lesser cut and it's going to be a bit dry even though we've larded it. So what happens then is this little baby goes in the bag. Oops, <laughs> in the bag. I, this is an ordinary food saver appliance. I like to triple seal it because I find too often one seal fails, and sometimes two seals fail. I've never had three seals fail. So in the bag it goes with all our goodies. Oops, come sa. All the mess is in the bag. This is the lovely food saver appliance. It is gonna suck all the I hope. It's gonna suck all the air out of the bag and seal it. And uh, I hope it will. I need more you know what? I need a bigger kitchen. I don't have enough counter space. Here we go, it has to fit in that slot. Seal it. Vacuum and seal, watch this. Watch that. Come on, baby. And it was sealed the first time. See all that goop? I'm gonna seal it some more. Now we have all the mess is in this bag. Isn't that neat? How easy could it be? 
Now, when you're doing fancy sous vide at a restaurant, they'll have special equipment and uh, special temperature controlled and, and water baths and circulating water baths and all that. We don't need that. What we're going to do is we're going to put in cold water so we don't shock it. And you know that the crock pot on low heat will never at any point get any hotter than 212 degrees Fahrenheit at sea level or 100 degrees Celsius because it's water. It doesn't get any hotter than that unless it's under pressure. So the, we're just going to let it go. Now, the thing is, once it's in the bag, you could have put that in the ice box for overnight and, and put it in the next morning. I'm figuring this is going to want maybe 12 hours. I'm figuring it could even go, this is the morning. This is Sunday morning at about 9.30. I'm thinking it could go till next day, but we're going to find out. And now it's been cooking 12 hours in, at low heat in the slow cooker. And all the mess is contained to one convenient spot. I'm just going to pour this out. Ooh, it smells great. Oh gosh, it smells fabulous. And let's see what we go. Oh, look at it. I can't believe it. Can you get a shot of this? Look at that. It's absolutely great. No, no thought required. Which is, can you get a cut a shot of that? Oh my, it's tender. I can't believe this. Now I'm gonna take this out. I'm just gonna slice this off. Look at that. This is like 12 hours later. No work required. I'm slicing it about quarter, half inch thick. Look at that. That is beautiful. Look at that. Absolutely tender. This meat otherwise would have been a piece of leather. It's got fabulous flavor. You can take this sauce here, you can put it through a strainer and boil it down and make a lovely gravy. This is like a perfect no work roast. It's lovely.